And once you've uh, you know you're into your your lessons and you have you know I have a bunch of stuff in here. Obviously, uh, I'm just uh, into my success strategies uh, course. My video here is in the way. So uh, if I want to bring in a, a create a video or a quiz rather, uh, again, you do need to uh, uh, be sure that you've turned on your your uh, editing. Oops, that's not the right one. Up and into here. Make sure your editing is turned on uh, or you can't do anything. Basically, you can't add anything. You can't uh, create any quizzes or projects or anything else. And you can tell by whether or not you have, uh, you can see editing here off to the side. Uh, this uh, allows you to, um, you know, suggest what you're going to be able to do. And primarily, you're adding your uh, a, uh, uh, activity or resource. Uh, when you click on that, you see a number of things that you can do. Uh, the assignment, uh, and if there's something here that you want to go over that uh, one of us doesn't cover, we can go back over it. Um, you can uh, just uh, quickly, if you want to add um, a video, for example, an online video, you can uh, go to URL. And uh, so if I had a YouTube video I wanted to show, of course, this is a problematic for, uh, for China. So uh, you'd have to find something that was compatible with China or, or you can't see it. But you just click on that and, and uh, hit add and it would open up a page here for you put the title and your external URL that you're going to see. Um, so being that our distance students are, are in China, we need to be aware of what they can see and can't see. But that is a function you, you might at some point want to use. Uh, with my success strategies, I show lots of videos and they're all, uh, they, they've all been uh, YouTube based. So I have to think what I'm going to do. Um, it is possible for me to record. Um, well, I can download them. I have a, there's a freeware called, uh, it's called Any Video Converter. You can see it up here at any-video-converter.com uh, where you can download it free of charge. And it's, uh, it is for converting, as its name suggests, converting a video from one for format to another, video for, to, uh, into audio only. Um, but uh, one of its functions is to also to uh, download from uh, the internet. Uh, this is what uh, any video uh, converter looks like. Um, if you're going to just convert a video, you click on, on this. Uh, in fact, this is the, the, the default is uh, with this, where you can add, uh, click and, and add uh, or drag and drop a video that you want to convert into something else. And you can see that you have lots of op options here. Like I was uh, converting something to audio. Obviously, I don't remember why, but I was. Um, but besides that, you can, uh, uh, you know, down, also change it to MP4s, and it has a number of different, not just format MP4, but different. Uh, for some reason, very specifically MP4 for uh, for different uh, different apparatuses, so Apple and so forth. Um, lots and lots of options. Uh, so I typically just uh, actually. Anyway, uh, there are so down here. Uh, you can, again, you can go to audio together and drop the video out and so forth. Uh, but this, uh, with this tab here, you can go ahead and, and add a URL from YouTube or another site, and it will copy that um, that video and uh, uh, save it onto your uh, hard drive or wherever you want it to uh, save to. So I could download those and I could upload them uh, into my media. So that's probably what I'll have to do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a qu uh, quiz. Um, and this one I'm going to cancel. And we will go back and hit that uh, add activity or resource again. I'm right, hitting quiz this time. And uh, so again, you need to give it a name. Mm 
And you can add a description. You don't really need to. Timing is important, um, particularly as you consider things like potential for students to uh, uh, cheat uh, somehow. Uh, there's two places to, to control timing on your quiz. One is from what time it's open to what time it's closed. And so with students in China, we may need to leave it open for quite a few hours because we don't know when they're going to access it. So you may need to leave it open for 12 hours. So that, of course, at the same time gives students more time to cheat. <laughs> Um, so but that's not the only place you can control it. So let's say we're going to uh, have it on, uh, you know, say tomorrow. So we – oops, I need to hit Enable. So hit your Enable buttons. If you can't, it doesn't seem to work for you, hit Enable. And uh, change your dates. And so I'm going to open it at uh, – I'll go ahead and leave it like it is, uh, 3.13. And I'm going to leave it open until 10 o'clock at night or something on the same date. If you screw something up, it usually warns you that you're doing something stupid. Okay, here's the second place where you can control the time, however. How long do they have once you, once they open it? And so even if I'm doing it in a class and I'm controlling the time, maybe every student may not open it exactly at the same time. So you want them to have their full however many minutes you want them to have access to. So if I do an in-class quiz, I may give them 10 minutes. And so, but I'm setting the time from maybe 8.30 to 8.45. And uh, in case they start in late, they have some technical problems, something happens. Uh, but then here's where I control it. I give them 10 minutes. Uh, so once it... Uh, once they ran out of 10 minutes, it's going to close on them, save it, and close on them, and, and that's it. Um, there's other places you need to, uh, other items you need to control for. Um, probably not uh, grade to pass. You probably don't need that. But down here under how many attempts will they have, it, it, its default is unlimited. So, I mean, they could start, and they could do it, take it once, and they could take it again. Well, so you don't want them to do that, and if it's, you know, if you're saving the grades anyway. In some cases, you do. If it's a formative quiz of some sort, you want them to be able to retake it. Uh, maybe the maybe your grade is 100%, so they take it until they get it. Uh, I, I took a Corsetta course where that was the case, is that they wanted everybody to get 100%. And so you just retook it and retook it um, until you had your 100%. So uh, this you're probably... I'm, you know, in most cases I'm setting to one, uh, one attempt. Um, under uh, question behavior, there's one thing here uh, that uh, is default, and I, so I don't normally have to go in here, and that is shuffling the questions. The default is to shuffle the questions. So if students are sitting next to each other, they don't necessarily see the same question at the same time. And so that's under question behavior, and that the default is to shuffle it, and so I always just leave that. Uh, review is the is important. Uh, it defaults at basically showing you the right answer as soon as you do it. You don't want, uh, you know, especially if you're giving them uh, six hours or something to do the quiz, you don't want them, the first people to get the right answer and then tell the people that come later. And so you need to take, turn some of this stuff off. Uh, the attempt, yeah, that's fine. You can let them know they did an attempt, whether correct. Uh, you might uh, later on want to have that probably not at this not at this not immediately after attempt so I uh, immediately after attempt I turn everything off except the attempt uh, and I don't know why that would help them or not help them um, then the next one is later while the quiz is still open in other words one person finishes but other people are still taking it so I still leave that uh, pretty much blank uh, I don't want them to no, get any feedback yet, uh, just in case, again, especially if I'm giving them a long period of time to take it and one person takes it and other people haven't taken it yet. I don't want to give them anything there. So the next question, the next part then is after the quiz is closed. In other words, nobody can take the quiz anymore. So now it's up to you whether or not to give them the right answers. Uh, I usually do not give them the right answers. Uh, if I'm going to, if there's a chance that I want to give the question again in a midterm like if this is a, a 
you know, I, I frequently give a quiz for every class, in which case um, I might include the same question or some derivative of the same question in the final exam, if I have a final exam, in which case I, I'm not going to give them the answer. They have to go look for it. I'll let them know it's wrong, uh, but I'm not going to give them the answer. So it's up to you to decide what you're going to do here. Um, in, in my case, um, you know, I I'm, would n n normally not give them the right answer. There's other things too, by the way. You can give them feedback uh, as you set up. Um, and again, if it's formative, you might want to give them some feedback. It takes a little longer to give them feedback uh, on whatever answer they give. Uh, this is wrong because, uh, this is right because. I mean, you can do that, again, if it's formative and it's important to you as a learning tool, then as we proceed to creating the questions, you can uh, add the feedback. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and leave this all on uh, because I do want to show you one other thing uh, when I get done uh, that relates to uh, preparing your final portfolio. Um, what I'll show you is how to get a copy of your entire quiz uh, with the right answers so that, that might, well, I put that in my final portfolio when they want to know you know what they want the 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 answers they want to know you know what 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 feedback you're giving them so forth so i i'll in order to do that i do need to uh be able to give them the right answer at some point uh, actually i'm going to go ahead and turn this on uh because i want to do it immediately uh for that's the only reason i'm turning it on is i want to show you how to make a copy for yourself if you want a copy of the right answers uh, the rest you don't really need uh, to do anything with. There's nothing there that's particularly important that I, that I can think of. If you're first creating it, the easiest button here to choose is Save and Display because it'll take you immediately into um, where you need to go in order to create your questions. You can still get there if you go this other way, but uh, uh, Save and Display will get you there quicker. So this uh, is, is basically, this is taking you back to into the quiz. And one of your options here is to edit the quiz. So you haven't done any, gotten any questions in there yet. So I'm going to hit edit the quiz. And uh, we're into the edit mode. Uh, as far as if you're, as you may know or may not know, I guess, uh, if you're doing all your grading within Moodle, you can download an Excel spreadsheet at the end of the semester and you have all your grades uh, for every student. And so, uh, you know, you know what, what do you want to do with this? Do you want to make it 100%, for example, or do you want to make it the exact number of points that it's worth uh, for in your scheme? Uh, frequently, uh, for example, in success strategies, I may have a quiz that's only worth uh, a few points, maybe two points, um, because I'm doing one every week. And so it's building up, but it's kind of formative in nature. So each quiz is not worth very much, but it it forces them. I, first off, it tells me who's in class if I'm doing it in class, um, and it's uh, um, you know getting them to watch the videos I'm assigning out of class and stuff. So it, it, it keeps them uh, on on uh, pace with everybody else. Uh, here's before I start adding questions. Here's uh, another option for for shuffling things. In this case, it's shuffling the answers within the within the question. Um, so you were um, excuse me. No, this is still back shuffling question. I'm sorry. That's that's wrong. Um, no, this is okay. This yeah, this is shuffling the questions within the the quiz. Uh, when we get into uh, so now we want to add uh, our questions. Um, I was already asked by somebody uh, uh, about adding questions that you may already have for some reason from a textbook or whatever. Uh, you're uploading that. I have questions already from previous semesters, for example. And so that would be in this under uh, add the question bank, uh, add from the question bank. So in this case, this is um, all the questions I've asked in this course before. And so I can go in here and click the ones I want and uh, And then, as I when I get to the bottom, I can go ahead and add them uh, to the uh, to the course. Uh, this is actually not the primary one. I need to go back over here. You have to be a little careful. This is 
I'm not sure where those questions came from exactly from some time ago in the past. But if I look here, this tells me how many questions are under something. That tells me this is one of the all my four classes we've had a four requirement question. So I'm going to go ahead and um, be a little careful as you're adding that you're in the right place. If you upload some questions from an outside source, for example, it's going to have its own spot here that you're going to add those questions from. Um, so again, if I wanted to add some, just to show you just with a couple of questions, I can go through here and decide oops, which ones I want. And, uh, and then at the bottom, I uh, hit add selected question to the quiz. You can still go in there and change them if you want to. So if you want to revise your questions, uh, you've asked them before, now you want to reword them a little bit, um, then you can go in and uh, your editing, uh, you do your editing right here, and it'll put you into the question, and you can, um, you know, write, uh, okay, this is an essay here. Um, I don't do a lot of essays um, because that means you have to grade it yourself. And so when I'm doing my weekly quiz and stuff, then it's all uh, multiple choice, true and false or whatever. But I just happen to randomly choose one that happens to be an essay. Uh, once in a while I do it, but not very often. Okay, I'm going to cancel that. Okay, so I'm, in this case, now I want to add, uh, and you can add it in a different position, although if you're shuffling, it doesn't really matter where you add it. Um, here, this is... Um, the portion of the overall grade. So if I say it's worth, uh, I'm going to go back and say two here and save, uh, then actually this is just um, its mark, its portion of two. So if I end up with 10, each one is only worth 0.2. Uh, if I end up with 20, it's, you know, you get the idea, 0.1. And so this will divide itself up. Uh, unless you want to change this for some reason. This question is going to be worth more than another question. Uh, I don't usually do that, but that gives you that choice here. This question is more valuable. I'm going to give it more uh, relative weight than the other ones, you could say. Okay, adding. Uh, once you hit add, uh, if you add a new question. Um, now you have, I mostly use, like I say, once in a while I use essay, uh, use some of these other ones. The ones I mostly use, especially if I want the machine to grade it, I'm using multiple choice, true and false, or matching. Uh, short answer, the main problem with short answer is you have to give it all the possible acceptable short answers. So even if it's one word, um, you know, you have to think about, okay, what if they misspell? What if, in other words, it's a sentiment, synonym? You know, what short answer are you going to accept? And so, yes, you can do short answers, um, you have to think about that problem. Um, so I usually avoid short answer, but anyway, it's there if you want to use it. So multiple choice, I'll hit that, hit add. It'll come up here again. Uh, question name, you can give it a, whatever you, you know, sort of name you want. You might want to do it by topic uh, with success strategies. I, with most of my courses, I do it by week. And I saw, no, which week does this question relate to? And so if it was week one, um, you know, I might just go SS1 for success strategies one. And they're all, basically everything for that quiz is SS1. Uh, you could differentiate some if you wanted to, but uh, so the, the, the name, you can replicate the name, the name be whatever you want it to be. So your question here in a true and false, um, Yeah, I'm thinking of two things at once. Who is the author of Seven Habits Again, you have some places for feedback. I very rarely give feedback. There are some cases where I might want to have uh, more than one answer. Um, particularly, for example, I like to turn questions around sometimes. 
So I say something, in one case I might say, um, which are some of the ideas of Stephen Covey about, uh, uh, you know, about being proactive? And so I list, you know, the answers are all, you know, there are a whole bunch of answers that are correct, in which case you can have uh, more than one answer. And you'd get to say how much each answer is worth. Now that's not my question here, so I, I'm just gonna leave it with one answer. But uh, you can do that. And then sometimes I switch that, it's really easy then to switch that question around, which of the following is not one of the ideas about being proactive uh, by Stephen Covey. So now that becomes one question or one answer instead of a bunch of answers. Uh, so that's one way I, I change the questions. Uh, Mm -hmm, sure. Yes, um, where are you at? Oh, okay. Um, well, I ignore it. So, um, it says if used, the ID number must be unique. Um, I mean, it would be an ID number for the question. I don't know when you would want to use that. I've never used it. Uh, but if you want to be very specific about the questions you're asking and you have some sort of a, I guess you could, uh, you know, use, do a search for them or something. Uh, I've, I've never, I never use ID number, not required. Um, okay, again, now here is the shuffle of the choices. So the one was shuffling the question, this is shuffling the choices. If you are going to have a question where you have all of the above or none of the above, that word above becomes a key question related to this. Because if you're shuffling the answers, it's no longer above in most cases. It's someplace else in your list. And so uh, if you're going to have an answer of all of the above or none of the above, uh, then turn this off don't shuffle the answers. Uh, otherwise, you can shuffle the answers. And, and again, as the students are taking them, they not only see a different uh, question at the same time, but they're seeing a different answers uh, in the different order. And so that helps a little bit if you have a tight space and you have students sitting next to each other and you're doing it in class. Okay, so you know, easy answers here. And since they're being shuffled, it doesn't really matter what order you put them in. Um, maybe I just put last names. Uh, so in this case, this is the answer. So I can put 100% there. Um, down here, I'll put somebody else that I frequently talk about, Christian Sun and Ziegler. And Robbins. Um, and uh, anyway, whoever. Uh, if you want more answers, you you uh, can hit this box here and add more answer, more choices. And sometimes I do. Um, you know, make it a little bit harder or whatever. Uh, I may add some some more choices. Um, the rest you really don't need to worry about. Uh, so you can just save changes, and it'll take you back. To do another question. Uh, to uh, maybe emphasize what I just said, I'm going to go ahead and do another multiple choice um, and this time have multiple answers. The so multiple choice add So now uh, I'm going to have multiple answers. And so I have to change this. So let's say there's, uh, okay, so there's, um, 
let's say I'm going to give four of the seven. Um, so uh, if I'm going to give four, then each answer is going to be worth 25% of the of this grade. So I need to hit 25%. Um, Okay, that's correct, so another 25%. So another 25%. Okay, so this isn't one of them, so we don't give it any grade. And then we need a fourth one to come out. So another 25%. Now, in some cases, and maybe some quiz you might give where you might give different values to each of these, uh, such as you might give partial credit uh, for an answer that is kind of okay. You know, I mean, it's kind of, it's not really the right answer, but it's kind of partially right. You could do that if you wanted to. I don't normally do that, but you can do that. So I'll save those changes, or save those uh, responses. Uh, go to true and false. So true and false, obviously, is pretty easy because you only have two possible answers. And so it's question, uh, so basically it's a statement uh, that you're making. Um, you can kind of give an intro to it, although it's true and false and they can figure it out. But uh, um, Okay, uh, that's a false answer. Its default uh, is false, by the way. So if it's true, you have to change it to true. Uh, so this one is false, so I'll leave it like it is. And again, you can just, it has space there for feedback. Save changes. Um, I, I, I don't, it's not one of my most common ones, but I like sometimes putting in um, matching questions. What did I do? Why is it not accepting it? Oh, okay. So if it's not accepting it, you have to figure out what you did wrong. So I didn't put a name in there. Um, so matching is a little different. Uh, it should probably be uh, worth more than a true and false question. A true and false question might be worth more, again, if you want to change values. Uh, matching is, uh, I don't usually actually change the value, but I consider, I definitely consider it, depending how hard I make it. Like some, in my understanding journalism course, I took enti entire paragraphs out of the textbook uh, or the chapter that I was using out of a textbook and plunked in there. So they actually had to have time to read it and match, you know, what the, the theory with the explanation of that of that theory. Uh, so obviously I had to, you know, consider how much time that would take them to do. Uh, so it can be more more complicated. Uh, and in a sense, if I have, uh, you know, five possible matches, then then in a sense that's almost five questions. And so that's one reason I like it sometimes. But it you have to consider. Uh, what what you're doing with it, you know, what the impact of it. So again, I need to remember to put in the the name. So here I'm going to say match 
um, the author um, with the concept, with their primary concept, I guess, whatever. So here you're, uh, they're calling it question and answer. Um, anyway, it, they, they show more space here under the question, um, but it does give you extra space down here too. If, if uh, for example, I was doing what I said, I say I put up here, um, you know, the needs and gratifications theory, and then I plunk a, uh, a, a complete paragraph down here, it will hold it, uh, but maybe because it, suggest this one could be longer I might put the paragraph up here and the name down here um, but anyway so here I'm going to do some authors so Covey um, I just go ahead and put the name of his book Now here they start off as only three, so in this case I would typically add more. Um, it doesn't seem like much of a matching challenge if there's only three possible possibilities, but that's where they start. You can add more. Okay, let's say I'm going to leave it there, but I want another answer that doesn't have um, a person attached to it. So I want to make it just a little bit harder by having an, a, a wrong answer that's wrong for everybody. Make it a little bit harder. And you can do that by just adding another answer and then not associating it with anybody. And so, um, whatever the answer might be. Maybe just real quick in case some of you want to try the uh, the uh, short answer. I'll show you what it looks like. And how you write the question may allow you to pin it down a little bit. Uh, they don't count capitalizations uh, by default. Uh, but, um, you know, for example, in the subject I'm teaching, it might be um, write uh, the one key word um, for each uh, for uh, habit five. Uh, we'll go with habit four. Um, so the answer, you know, is win-win. So how do you put that down? Um, I mean, do, what what are the possible answers here? Um, so you have to re, you know put at least one answer. So win. Uh, but. You know, even though I tried to narrow it down a little bit, well, would it be wrong to say win win? Or would it be wrong to say put a hyphen in there? Win win. Um, or, you know, do you really want to not count it if they say think win win? 
Uh, you, you just see how complicated it can get once with a fairly simple question. Um, Because all they're seeing is the question and they're typing in their answer. They're not seeing options now because this is a multiple choice now. This is, so just that one simple question and you have to think about all the possible answers you're going to accept, which is why it makes it complicated. Uh, so, you, you know, be careful about uh, what sort of questions you want to ask when it comes down to uh, short answers. Oops, what did I do? Oh, I didn't uh, tell it what was right. Well, um, I still have to, I have to grade each one of these. Am I going to give it 100% or am I give it a part of the, if they don't do, it, do exactly what I said, you know, I said, you know, be specific. But anyway, so, so each of those answers, you have to tell it what you would accept. So if you, if you didn't, if, they, if you can think of some that eh, you get partial credit for, but you're not going to get full credit for, then that you also have to figure out. So you know, that's why I don't use this very much. It, it gets kind of complicated. Um, and anyway, but if you had, you know, let's say some of you do um, definitions, you know, and so there is one word for it, uh, and you expect them to do it right. The only other thing you really think out maybe is, uh, so you give the definition, they have to give what it defines. Then maybe you might consider different spellings that they might misspell or something. Uh, that's up to you. Uh, but you have to think about all that stuff if you if you do that. Okay, so we have all of these. Uh, so uh, just uh, you can test them yourself. Um, actually, I'm going to kill this one. Um, this is an essay, and I don't want to get into the essay part, so I'm going to kill the essay. So we want to save this. And uh, you can go uh, back to where you were. You can go back to the test example and uh, go ahead and head and uh, Tell it you want to preview, start attempt. I'm going to get some wrong here just to show you what you'll see. Oh, here's the matching one. Um, so, um, hmm. it only showed me the three of them. Or maybe that, did I do that one? Anyway, um, so, um, which one? Oh, this is another. Oh, this is the other one I added in from my past one, so no longer wonder. Okay, so anyway, I'll just choose one. Rather than actually thinking about it. Short answer. So well, here's the one I created. So now we have five options. So I'm associating which one, which uh, concept with each of the authors. And so one of them is not being chosen. And that was the last question. So I'll hit finish attempt. And uh, it'll ask you at the bottom, are you sure you want to finish 
now and so submit all and finish. Okay, I went ahead and, uh, as you recall, I went ahead and, and told it to give me the answer immediately after I was done. And so in this case, uh, you know, some of these are, you know, it's giving me the right answer, which is in this case false, but uh, uh, and some of these I will make mistakes on. Um, so this one uh, is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and uh, so it's uh, telling me, um, Did I actually get them all right? No, you know, it's giving me the right one. No, there, there's, it is wrong. So they're telling me what the right answers would have been, and I got some wrong. So that was okay. So basically, in this one, they they're giving you a correct answer for each one rather than the correct answer for the whole, the whole thing. And that one's okay. Um, so I, I mentioned, though, that if you wanted to make a copy of this, um, the quickest way, I'm going to do another, um, I'll start a new preview. And the quickest way, first off, you have to have told it that to give you an immediate, uh, uh, you know, let you see the, the, correct, the correct answers immediately. Um, and so I start a new attempt. And if I just want to show my questions and the correct answers, then I can not answer any of them and just say, finish the attempt and uh, finish the attempt. And then it's, I, I didn't, haven't given it any answers, but all of them are, you know, it's giving me the right answer to all of them. And then I can just go ahead and print that, hit control P and uh, it'll give me all the questions and all of the right answers uh, for to, to put in. You know, it'll, I, I can tell it to print it or I can tell it to print it into PDF, which I normally do if I'm going to put it into a CD and, and uh, add to my CD responses to the, uh, so whichever you're doing, if you're doing hard copy or doing soft copy, you, know, you can do either one. So that's how I get my, all, all the answers to all my quizzes. Even if I'm doing weekly quizzes, it's not too hard to show all the quizzes, all the answers, uh, and then I can show them, I can print out the Excel spreadsheet showing them what everybody got uh, with the quizzes. So they've been satisfied with that um, because if you're going to give, if you're going to do too much work on quizzes, you can't afford to do weekly quizzes. You know, if, 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 you're, if it takes you 10 hours to uh, do your portfolio because you did 10 quizzes or whatever, it's not worth it. Uh, so that's what I do, and they've accepted it so far. Any questions on any of that? If not, real hard. Um, so I will give the time. You want to use my computer? Are you gonna? You're gonna use your own? Okay. <laughs> 